Welcome to this short video series for people who are new to Postman. My name is Valentin Despa and by the end of it, you should have a good understanding of what Postman is and what you can do with it and gain some practical experience in using some APIs. In this first video, we'll go over sending your first request using Postman. So let's begin. There are two ways of running Postman as a standalone app, which is available for Windows, Mac OS or Linux or in your browser by going to postman.com. There is also an old and deprecated Google Chrome extension. Don't use that one as you won't be able to follow along with the series. I will be using the browser application throughout this tutorial, but the app's functionality is very similar. So I won't spend too much time on this. You will find some links with the installation instructions in the video description. I'll go to postman.com and sign up for an account. The setup after this is relatively easy and I won't create a team yet. Postman is actively developed. By the time I have finished recording, editing and publishing this video, a new version will be released. You may notice slight differences from what you see right now in this video. However, I can assure you that the principles stay the same. I will update the video description if there's something really important you need to know. Postman is an HTTP client which allows you to easily create requests in order to get data from an API. If you don't know what an API is, check the video description as you will find another series that will introduce you to APIs. For the first example, I will use the Postman Jobs API and you will find a link in the video description. Every API out there has a documentation explaining how to use it. The same goes for this API. The Postman Jobs API exposes information about open positions available at Postman. So for example, if we're trying to get a list of all the jobs available, all we have to do is call this endpoint. We'll have to create a get request to this jobs endpoint. So I'm going to start by copying the address of this API. And I'll go to Postman, open up a new tab, paste the address of the API. We'll see by default, we are creating a get request method. And I'm going to add here the name of the endpoint, which is jobs. And click on send. Now, after we have submitted this request, with the help of Postman, we can inspect the response. This response will be formatted using the JSON format. JSON is essentially a way to represent information so that any computer or programming language can easily understand and work with this data. It is also relatively easy for us humans to read it as well. In this case, we have gotten here a list of all the jobs available. And I also wanted to point out the status code, which is 200 OK. 200 OK means that everything went well with this request. The server has understood what we wanted and was able to fulfill our request. Going back to the API documentation, we can also see that we can specify some optional query parameters. In this case, the query parameters represent a way to pass data to the API. These query parameters allow us to filter the data available. So for example, we can get jobs only from a specific location or only from a specific country. Or with the queue parameter, we are able to search after a specific keyword. So let's go ahead and try the location. Going back to Postman and you will see here this panel with query params. And I will simply paste the location and you will see here that this is automatically added by Postman to the address. We'll see here after jobs, a question mark, and then we'll see location. Now, when I start typing, I want you to notice what happens with the address. You will see that as I type, Postman automatically adds this query parameter to the address itself. I'm gonna click here on send, and you will see here that all the jobs that are coming back have the location in San Francisco. Let's go ahead and add another query parameter. So let's say, for example, we are searching for something in sales. So I'm going to add a queue parameter, provide sales, and Postman again will add this additional parameter to the address. It's much easier for us to edit these parameters here than to fiddle with the address itself. Now you will see that there's only one job that matches the search criteria that I've given here. 
For testing purposes, it's useful to be able to disable query parameters. You can do this from here. To re-enable them. To disable them completely if you don't need them. Or later on, you also have the possibility of simply deleting them. So to do that, you simply have to hover over the query parameter that you wish to delete. You will see here an X at the end and you can click on it. Now, let's say we're happy with what you have right now and would like to save this request so that we can use it later on. Right here, you'll see this save button. And when you click on it, this additional window will appear. In Postman, we cannot save a request on its own. We have to add it to a collection. And a collection in Postman is a fundamental concept used to group and share requests. So we'll always have requests being added to a collection. So let's create here a collection. And I'm going to call it Postman Jobs API. And I can also give my request a name. I'm going to click on save. And you will see here on the left hand side, under collections, we now have the Postman Jobs API collection, which now contains only a single request. Later on, if you want to come back and run this request again, all we have to do is to identify the collection that we want to use. Click on the request we want to run. This will open up exactly as we have saved it. And then we can click the send button. If the number of requests you have in your collection gets too big, feel free to create folders to better organize your work. All you have to do is click here on these three dots to open a contacts menu and you'll be able to add a folder. You can simply drag and drop requests in that folder. Feel free to create as many levels of folders as you need. Also, take a minute to see which other options are available from the context menu as you may need them later on. This first collection is part of a workspace. As you start working on multiple APIs or in a different project, you may feel the need to create new workspaces, which you can easily do from the Postman interface. Before you go, I just wanted to point out a few mistakes that beginners tend to make. First off, let's start with the parameters that you send to the API. It is really important that you write them exactly as the API documentation specifies them. Upper or lowercase characters do make a difference, so make sure you don't write location with a capital L or all in uppercase or any combination of these, as this will not work and the API will not understand what you mean. When you're copy pasting information, make sure that you don't add any new lines or spaces in your addresses or in your parameters. And finally, you will sometimes see these empty brackets. This is not an error, as you can see the status code is 200. It just shows an empty list, so in this case, it means that there are no jobs matching the criteria you have given. In this video, we have installed Postman and submitted our first request. We have played around with query parameters, inspected the response body, and saved the request or collection as a way to better organize our work. In the upcoming videos, we'll explore other features that Postman offers.